Hello everyone, and welcome to Second Sunday Family Art Making, presented by the Cantor Arts Center and the Anderson Collection at Stanford University. We are so excited to have you join us for today's art making activity, inspired by the works of artists Diana Lee and Doho Sa. Here's our curator Maggie to talk a little bit more about the exhibition that these artists are a part of, When Home Won't Let You Stay. The Cantor's current exhibition, When Home Won't Let You Stay, is all about migration. That means moving from one place to another. And the show is also about how we define and experience home. Diana Lee's artwork, Nest, takes inspiration from, you guessed it, a bird's nest. The artist found this tangle of wire in her parents' backyard and wove the wires together to create a hanging nest shape. Like birds with their nest, people don't always stay in the same house their whole lives. And many of us might consider more than one place home. Maybe your homes are where you used to live and where you live now. Or maybe you live with one parent sometimes and another guardian other times. Wherever it is you feel at home, it doesn't stop feeling that way just because you may not be there now, right? These artworks by Doho Sa called Hub 1 and Hub 2 are thinking about just that, the way we carry home with us in our memory. The artist has recreated the entryway and the breakfast nook from his childhood home in Seoul, South Korea, out of thin, colorful fabric. This isn't just an artwork you look at. It's also an artwork you walk through. From inside the sculpture, you can see that the artist reproduces the spaces down to the smallest details, like doorknobs, window cranks, and electrical outlets. At the same time that these details suggest he remembers the spaces exactly, the see-through fabric that he uses makes the spaces seem dreamlike or like a fading memory. When you look out through the pink and yellow translucent fabric, you can also see everything around you outside, making you think about how your experiences of home color your view of the world. As you make your birdhouses, Think about the things that make where you live feel like home. What can you include in your birdhouse to make it feel like home for the birds? Have fun! Wow, thank you, Maggie, for showing us this amazing artwork. This is the inspiration for our art making activity today. We're going to be having fun making birdhouses and bird feeders as we experiment with different art making materials and methods. And don't worry if we're going too fast or you can't make your birdhouse right now. You can watch this video again later on our Facebook pages or on the museum websites shown here. Hi everyone. To begin, let's talk about the ideas Dohosa had for making this art in the first place. Here are images of two artworks that you will see when you visit the exhibition at the Cantor. These brightly colored pieces made out of transparent fabric came from his idea to make suitcase homes, homes that can be folded and packed for a journey. They are actually exact replicas of rooms and homes in which the artist lived. They tell the personal story of his life in an original way that visitors can interact with. Doha Sa believes that the spaces we inhabit contain psychological energy. In these self-portrait drawings, Doho Sa shows us how he feels when he thinks about home, that home is a part of who we are as a person. He says, when I realized everything is all about the process, there is no reason to seek for some sort of answer. You are living in the present moment, and that is the most important thing. It is not about the future or the past. All my works are like residue or the shed skin of snakes. You grow out of your own body and move to become something else. When Doho Sa talks about process, it means he likes to try a lot of different ways to express what he is feeling. This drawing is very exciting. It looks like Doho Sa is thinking about home as a parachute. It is as if he is saying, a home helps you land safely when you take a leap of faith. Here's another drawing by Doho Sa. He is drawing himself carrying all the different homes that he has ever lived in around in his head as memories. This also reminds me to say that if you don't have all the art materials you need to make an activity, you can always make a drawing that shows the way you feel. 
And that is a wonderful thing to do wherever you may be. As Dohosa says, we carry the memory of us all the places we have ever lived. Material and medium are terms to describe how an artwork is made. Look closely at this life-size sculpture constructed by Dohosa. It is made of polyester fabric supported by stainless steel poles. Can you describe it in words? What details do you notice? What does it remind you of? What do you wonder about it? These sculptures are painstakingly sewn in one-to-one -one scale with doorknobs, molding, and outlets crafted in precise detail. These artworks represent two spaces from the artist's childhood home in South Korea, the entry and eating area. Dohosa imaginatively links places that he has lived as he reconfigures memories of home in the present. The elements of art are helpful when we are trying to describe an artwork with words. For example, the color of this artwork is yellow all over, and it is made up of geometric shapes, mainly rectangles and triangles. It occupies a rectangular space on the floor, and it is the size of a room in a house. It is made of sheer fabric that allows light to pass through it. This translucency evokes the nature of memory and represents two spaces from the artist's childhood home in South Korea. I consider migration to be a process, says Dohosa, not something that happens overnight. Each step of the process is like crossing another threshold. Now imagine that you are a bird. For migratory birds, a yard makes an ideal rest stop during their travels. In spring, some birds begin their migration north as they return from winter homes down south. So this is a great time to build a migration station. First, you will decide whether you are making a bird feeder or a bird house. A bird house is a safe place for birds to build a nest. A bird feeder is a gathering place for birds and a wonderful opportunity for you to observe their behavior. To protect the birds, Place your migration station out of reach of cats and squirrels. You can also make a plastic milk container into a bird feeder. Be careful the plastic edges can be sharp, so covering them with tape will be kinder to the little bird's feet. For an art-making bonus, keep a notebook or sketchbook nearby so that you can count the birds, keep track of the different species, and make some drawings. Outdoors or indoors? You could keep your birdhouse indoors as an artwork for display and discussion or perhaps for a pet bird to enjoy. The dramatic line that is created by the dried vine added to the simple box makes this birdhouse exciting to look at, like a sculpture. Here are a few elements of art to keep in mind while you build your migration station. In this example, we can see the color has been painted directly onto the milk carton with lively brush strokes. The shapes we see are rectangles and triangles. Form is the three-dimensional representation of shape, and the red string attached to the top of the bird feeder is a line. Another artist who inspired this activity is Diana Lee. She made the sculpture called Nest from a tangle of electrical cables that she found in her parents' backyard. It is much bigger than a real nest for birds, but it is woven together in a way that looks like birds may have built it. Now let's hear from the artist as she talks about her work. So the way it works is there's a, um, but there's a radio at the top um, to describe the piece and um, that radio is um, tuned to air traffic control um, and it's connected to a box in the middle of the nest there um, and that connects to a light bulb. So the sound um, that is coming through the radio gets, gets translated into um, energy for this light bulb. Um, so it's kind, of, it's kind of like a, I guess the beacon, but also like, kind of a godly, like, spiritual, like, where is this voice coming from, um, and why is it 
uh, lighting up this bulb at the bottom and why is the light bulb at the bottom? Um, but I think, uh, so I made this piece in my first year of grad school at San Francisco Art Institute. And um, back then I was thinking a lot about um, technology. My dad is a, um, he's a technician and um, he fixes and installs uh, home entertainment systems and um, home, home appliances. Um, so uh, when I was, this was like my first semester of grad school and I, I didn't know what I was gonna make, but I saw just a stack of cables in the backyard and it was already kind of looking like a nest. And I was like, what if I wove it into, into a different kind of nest? Um, and then the ideas kind of just flowed from there. Um, I think conceptually, I, I was working very conceptually in grad school too. Um, so some of the topics that I kind of dove, dove into were, were had to do with um, uh, my family's diaspora and um, my parents were born and raised in Peru and they're Chinese Peruvian and they immigrated to the Bay Area um, where they found their home in San Mateo. So, um, so my, my dad, he also, I also grew up um, kind of uh, in my dad's van as well. And my sister can also talk about that too. Um, but, but we, we would play in the back of his van and we would um, go to all these houses that, that were much more well off. They, they were rich to middle-class homes in Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, Mountain View. Um, and I think in grad school, something that I was reflecting on was, um, just how our home is very much in service of other homes and, um, and how just the, our house is very cluttered with a bunch of my, with a bunch of technology that, um, many of my dad's customers kind of like left off, um, with him. And, uh, so... So some of that included the, this cable nest and this old radio and whatnot. Um, so that's kind of the gist of where that the idea for this piece came from. One of the best parts about making art is sharing it with others and seeing how your art inspires their ideas. Now it's time to introduce you all to our second Sunday educators. They are here to help us with today's art activity. So feel free to write your questions and art making thoughts that you would like to share into the Zoom chat section and we will read and answer them at the end of this program. Now let's watch and listen as our educators show us how they did this activity. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna make a birdhouse today. I'm gonna start with my hole for the birds to get in the birdhouse. And here I'm using a milk carton and hopefully it's big enough for a bird family. And I'm punching holes here at the top of the carton, which is a little challenging. You might want to get some parental help <laughs> or someone strong, <laughs> maybe an older brother, who knows? But we're going to start here by painting it all in blue with acrylic paint. Now, the only colors I have are blue, red, and white. But we're gonna start it all in blue right now and give it a first layer. And you can see some of the words still because the milk carton is a little waxy. So we're gonna paint it once and then we're gonna let it dry. And then after a bit, we're gonna paint it again with the blue paint. And then you'll get a nice coat of paint on there. Look at that. Nice blue. And what's nice about only having blue, red, and white to paint with is that you have a warm color and a cool color. So I'm gonna use the red to paint some flowers. Look at that. And we're going to use the white to give tonal difference. And you can see here, I'm getting a light blue background that looks like clouds in the sky. Yes. And then we're gonna do some dark purples for the shadows. 
We're going to add a little more detail and a little more texture. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, just paint over it. It's okay. It's great to have layers. And then we're going to paint a bird on the birdhouse. Oh, I don't know if you can see it, but you will. Look at that. And sky blue. Boom, a bird. And now we're going to see what it looks like hanging. Look at that. A bird in the sky. And then the flowers with the bird hole. And then what's on the other side? I think you saw it earlier. Let's see. Oh. I love birds. Good luck. Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying Second Sunday. For my birdhouse, I wanted to make something to honor the style of Doho Sa, who is part of the exhibition When Home Will Let You Stay at the Cantor Arts Center. First, I used a Sharpie to outline the parts of the milk carton that I'll be cutting out. I cut a small hole for a bird to come through, and then big rectangles for a light to shine through. I'll cover these with paper later on. Make sure to ask for help if you want to cut something out and you're having trouble. Now I mixed white paint with a little blue paint to get a light blue color and painted the first layer on the birdhouse. I waited for the paint to dry between layers so it would turn out smooth. Now I'm adding a second layer and mixing some more paint so that it covers the words, the purple color of the carton really well. And finally, a third layer getting a pretty blue color. I used brush strokes going up and down to get a nice even look. Now I'm outlining and cutting out a big piece of tissue paper that I'll use to wrap the birdhouse and checking that it fits well. I cut a hole for the bird to come through and tied some string to hang it later. I did some trimming so that the paper fits nicely, put glue on the outside of the birdhouse and carefully wrapped it, starting with the front and working my way around, trying not to get glue on my fingers. I trimmed a little excess, added a perch, and ta-da! Done. What materials can you easily find to decorate your birdhouse? String or garden twine wrapped around the milk carton not only makes it sturdier, but birds can cling to it and nibble off fibers to build their nest. You may like to cover your milk container with colorful patterns from packaged food boxes using glue, tape, or staples. Use bits of clay, fabric scraps, or old buttons to add detail. It may rain on your house if it's outside, so when making a roof, think about using materials that repel water so the nest inside stays dry. Anything plastic will make a good roof. Here are some examples of decorated birdhouses. I like seeing the map that is glued to the front of this first house it reminds me of the long journey that birds make during migration. The plastic container is decorated to look like a funny bird. And the milk carton bird feeder is covered with colorful washi tape. Which one do you think will attract more birds? Now let's put all these ideas together. Migration. We are building homes so migrating birds can eat and rest. This encourages us to think creatively, like the artists we saw today. These artists created artwork that focused on home and how they felt moving from one home to another. To make their art, they use materials that are not traditional to art making, like sheer fabric and electrical wire. Even this drawing that looks like it was drawn with crayon was made using pieces of thread. Artists amplify elements of art to attract our attention. Dehosa used the element of shape by making repeating rectangles and then joining them together to create a sculptural form. He also used sheer fabric to manipulate light and color so that we can experience a new sense of space. Diana Lee makes her art expressive by using the element of line. She meshed electric cords together and built a form that resembles a giant bird's nest. This artwork is much larger than a real bird's nest and it makes sounds. 
There is a radio in the nest and it plays an airplane traffic channel. I hope you have fun making art and thank you for tuning in to Second Sunday. Be sure to share your artwork on our social media pages for the Cantor Arts Center and the Anderson Collection at Stanford and be sure to hashtag Second Sunday. Second Sundays are made possible through the generous support of the Hobach Family Fund. Thank you all so much for joining us today and we hope you enjoyed this art making activity. We hope you all have a great day and we'll see you next time on the original Second Sunday. We will now transition to the Q&A portion of our program. Please type your questions in the Zoom chat and our museum educators will answer them momentarily. You can tell us what you learned during the activity, your favorite part, if you're currently still doing the project, or if you're having any trouble, or if you have any questions about anything. Or if you're a speedy art maker, if you could do this project again, what would you do differently? Feel free to type them in now. All right, so we have um, our curator Maggie here joining us for our Q&A. So if you have any questions for her, please type them in. And we also have another special guest, everyone. Uh, this is my daughter, Olivia. She wants to come into the virtual background. Hi. And tell them what you made, Olivia. Um, so I made like a place for like the birds to like, for the birds to um, like make a nest in. <laughs> so I made a heart shape. And so like for the birds to make a nest inside or like we can, or they, they can have like, they can carry like, food in there and so like I thought it would be cute to like put a little heart in there. Awesome. Thank you for sharing Olivia. <laughs> All right. Back at the canter. <laughs> All right, um, so first of all, um, Nick, since you made this project, uh, if you had another chance to do it again, would there be anything you would do differently? Hmm. I'm not sure. I think I, I definitely would try to get more colors. And uh, I would probably also want to, hmm maybe figure out what kind of birds are in my area to maybe accommodate them the best. Because different birds have different preferences and some are smaller and then some are bigger. So you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's up to you to design your house the way you, you, you would think a bird would like it. Awesome. And uh, Diane, if you had a chance to make a bird feeder or a bird house, what do you think you would have made? Oh, well, yeah, like Nick says, I would just make, I think I would try, even if I didn't have time to decorate it, I think I would try hanging the carton with a hole out in, in um, or maybe a couple of them outside to see, ex do a scientific experiment to see which ones they liked, and then maybe go from there and maybe build a more decorative house after that. But um, I think whatever I have around the house would be good. I think the idea of having string there or something for them to build their nest with, I think, nearby is, is really important and, and they have to have water nearby and they, and they need a place to hide when they're not in the nest, like a little bush or something nearby. So, and you have to hang it way up high in the tree so that the, the birds and squirrels can't jump in and get the nest. So there are all kinds of things about placing the nest that are important. So I think I would try to figure out where I would put the nest, make a like a model nest and then go back and decorate it uh, later. But, um, that's what I would do. Awesome. And Maggie, um, we heard a little bit about how Diana Lee's nest and Doho Sa's Hub 1 and Hub 2 um, are connected. Is there anything else you can elaborate on that shows how these two um, pieces are uh, similar? Well, I really think that both of them are thinking about how home doesn't have to be a permanent place. You know, like I said in, in my intro video, we don't all stay in the same place forever. And um, the thing about bird's nest is it's not only a place for um, migrating birds to stop and rest, but it's also a place where baby birds grow up and then baby birds leave the nest. And so um, I've just been thinking a lot about places that I consider home and the home that like I grew up in is not the place that I live now. Um, and also places that I don't necessarily live, but I visit often, like my grandparents' house, and how I think of those as 
home too, even though I don't live there. And so both of those artists work, they're really thinking about that um, transitory nature of home. home. Home is where the heart is, as that saying goes. And that really is true, that it doesn't have to be a place that you live or stay all the time. It just has to be a place that means something to you. And that, as Dohosa says, that you carry with you. Awesome, beautifully said. Um, so a question for everyone, if we had a migration station for people, what do you think that would look like? Wow, what a great question. Um, well, I think, you know, the canter right behind you is sort of a migration station. I, I think of it as a migration station for artists and for people who love art. It's a place where you can go and, and feed your mind with and your eyes with lots of ideas and, and um things to inspire you. So I think we could make a little canter migration station outside the canter, one for birds and one for people. Sounds great. That's such a nice idea. And I think, um, Michael, your question gets at some of the complicated politics around migration, because, um, you know, people need a lot of the same things that birds do. We need food and water and comfortable places to hide when we don't feel like talking to other people. You know, we need safe spaces. Um, and so people who are, who are migrating, who are moving from one place to another, they don't always have access to all of those things safely. And so a migration station for people could just be um, something as simple as a warm place with food and water. Um, and hopefully also people who can help them, staff who can help them figure out what they need to do on their way to their new place. So that's such a nice question. Excellent. All right, well, before we go, Maggie, is there anything you'd like to say about our exhibition, When Home Won't Let You Stay? Um, it's available for viewing online right now. We have a lovely 3D virtual tour, um, and you can visit it at... Uh, museum.stanford.edu slash migration, and I hope you will. And we will hope to see you back in the museum to see the show sometime soon. Stay tuned. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to everybody for watching. We're going to sign off for today's Second Sunday. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.